Good morning. It's really a pleasure to be here, and I love it when the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic is called Extraordinary, because I really believe it is. It's an honor to have a chance to speak with you from a personal level about experiences around hunger in the community that I serve. It's really impressive to hear some of the data and some of the information that Dr. Dronowski was uh, sharing with us. It's kind of eye-opening, and it paints a broad landscape. It fulfills a, a broader camp a canvas for us to sort of talk about this issue. It's sometimes hard to recognize issues of hunger in our community, and I kind of think Seattle is especially difficult a place for that sometimes. Um, you know, we have these, these contrasting elements here in Seattle. We have incredible wealth, incredible philanthropy, and yet we have also amazing amounts of poverty and suffering at the same time. And they're so close together, it's actually hard to see. I think about my work. I get to work in the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. The clinic's been there in the central area for 41 years and provides pediatric dental, mental health, and medical services to kids that live in the central area, and now a lot of them live in South King County. Most of the families that we serve are poor. They're amazingly resilient, they're incredibly spirited, but they come from low-income backgrounds. It's an amazing honor to serve them. Well, one thing I realize when I think about these numbers, this data, this research, this information that we're sharing today, is that those numbers are people. I see the face of hunger in my clinic every day. I see the face of hunger in my clinic in the children that come into that clinic and in the families that come into the clinic. And it's amazing to me to think about that, to think about the face of hunger. The children that we serve aren't always showing up with hungry expressions. They're not looking hungry necessarily, but I see the face of hunger and I want to tell you how. The idea of hunger and the idea of constantly worrying about how to get a meal on the table is a powerfully, powerfully difficult thing for families to deal with. The idea of trying to hustle to get food on the table, worrying about whether or not you're going to be able to feed your child every day is stressful. It's constantly stressful. It's a constant force of stress that suffuses the bodies of families that have to deal with that. And it has an effect. It takes a toll. And in essence, a lot of the time, a wonderful mother who is working hard, trying to put food on the table, and doing that hustle, trying to squeeze the healthiest food she can out of her meager um, salary or income, trying to figure out sometimes how to just get as many calories per dollar as she can into her children, trying sometimes to find the food bank that still has supplies. That kind of a hustle takes its toll on a family and on a child's life. Constant stress. The face of hunger I see is the face of constant stress, and it manifests in very tangible ways. It is no coincidence that in our clinic we see ridiculously high amounts of hypertension in kids of diabetes in children, types of diabetes that actually weren't in existence when I was in training, of asthma, and of cardiovascular disease in the families. So the face of hunger is often the face of children facing chronic diseases. These are life-limiting chronic diseases, and they add up. They take their toll on a child's health. So the face of hunger is the face of chronic disease. The face of worrying about hunger, food insecurity, is a list of chronic diseases. And it's more than that, because those chronic diseases also affect other family members, adults. And so in our clinic, we see kids who come from fractured families, who are missing uncles and cousins, other family members, grandparents, sometimes parents. They're missing the mentoring, the nurturing, the guidance that comes from intact families. So the face of hunger that I see in the clinic is the face of children without complete families to support them. And it's more than that for these kids as well, because the stress, the constant stress of worry affects their bodies in other ways too. We now know that the stress of worry impacts a child's ability to achieve in school. The stress of worry impacts a child's social and emotional development. The stress of worry makes their rates of behavioral health and mental health conditions much more frequently intense. So the face of hunger in the community I serve is not just hungry faces. It's chronic diseases. It's fractured families. 
its behavioral, social, and developmental issues. So in our clinic, we learned a lot of lessons about this. We've thought about this and we've tried to learn lessons and apply them. And for me and for the folks that I work with at the Odessa Brown Clinic, one important lesson we've learned is if we sat there and waited for a child to get sick and then waited for them to come to the clinic before treating them, that would be a pretty insufficient model for providing pediatric primary care in the way that we want to. It's insufficient in the medical system to wait for children to be sick before we intervene. We have to move upstream. We have to find solutions that engage our communities and look for answers, look for ways to turn down that stress, to diminish that effect on those families. And so we've come up with some different ideas. For instance, um, we have a lawyer who comes into our clinic as part of a medical legal partnership. And that lawyer helps families navigate civil legal issues like housing and educational rights and transportation and social services. We have a book program where we give a book out to every child who comes in the clinic because we have learned that the best way for a child to grow up healthy is for them growing up educated. We've learned that lesson that you can't educate an unhealthy child and you can't keep an uneducated child healthy. And we've done other things to move upstream. In the wintertime, we've gone basic. We give out coats and gloves and galoshes. In the summertime, we give out swimming suits. In the fall, we give out school supplies to get kids ready for school. We do all of these things to try to move a little further upstream towards the sources of the stresses that affect families. But perhaps the most fundamental of those forces is hunger and the effects that they have. So we've tried a few things in our clinic as well. We have a nutritionist who is able to work with families in cooking classes, helping a family on a tight budget figure out how to get nutritious foods into their children's mouths. That nutritionist also does things like uh, shop around, where they'll go with a family to their own grocery store and try to help them shop a little bit more effectively. We do other things. We collaborate with other organizations that are doing things like community gardens and things like that. But when I think about moving upstream and impacting hunger, I have to think bigger. I have to think more systemically. And that's where partnerships and collaboration really take effect. That's where advocacy becomes incredibly important. That's where the voice of a clinic person in a community can have a real impact on an important program, like um, free and reduced lunches for children, free and reduced breakfast for children during the school year, free and reduced lunches and breakfasts for kids during the summertime. Advocating for programs like that that are progressive, transformative, and help change the face of hunger in the community is a way that I think we really make a difference. I don't want to see that face of hunger the way I see it today. I don't want to see those chronic diseases in those rates that I see them today. And I want to impress on you that those rates are related to the worry of hunger, the stress of hunger. I don't want to see those fractured families, those missing uncles and aunts. I don't want to see kids underperform in school. And I know that the solution to that is not me waiting in my clinic for them to get sick. The solution for that is when powerful, passionate, compassionate people come together and decide that they want a different future for themselves and for their children. When people partner and think about the programs that we have and the opportunities that we have for the kids that are our future, that's when we start to make a difference. I'm excited to spend some time with you to know that you care about this issue too because I love my job, I have the best job in the world and I see these bright kids with an important, wonderful future in front of them, and I wanna make sure they can live up to everything that they want to be. Thank you. Dr. Ben Danielson, thank you, doctor, and Dr. Drunowski, thank you as well. I've certainly learned a lot here this morning um, the importance of this issue, and I also wanted to let you know that King TV this weekend will team up with Home Team Harvest for what we're calling the Summer Hunger Challenge. We'll have drop-off points from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. at four different area malls, Everett, Northgate, Redmond Town Center, and the Tacoma Mall. Uh, love to have anybody who can drop by, drop off some food, and help out. Summertime is a time 
when a lot of those kids, like the kids at Cedar Heights Elementary, the 40% or more who get food subsidies at school, they don't get them. A lot of them suddenly don't have that uh, chunk of calories, that nutritional element in their lives anymore, and often their parents are working or looking for work and they don't necessarily have time to uh, help feed them and help fill that nutritional hole. So summertime is a key point when we really need to contribute and need to get food nutritious, easy to eat, easy to prepare food into the hands of children. That's what we're hoping to do this weekend with the Summer Hunger Challenge. We all need to do more, of course. Everybody in this room knows that, I think. That's why you're here. The good news is also that it's already happening and United Way is playing a pivotal role in making that happen. Let's take a look at the United Way plan for a hunger-free King County. It sounds like a grandiose scheme, but that's what it is. A plan for a hunger-free county. Developed in 2008, just as the economy was beginning to stumble here and around the country. As a result, though, food banks, meal delivery programs, urban gardening programs, cooking education programs, they've all been significantly strengthened in our local communities. So too of programs that reach out and sign people up for vital benefits, things like food stamps. With your help, of course, this work can continue and grow and flourish. And I'm very happy to tell you that the U.S. Department of Agriculture is getting on board, getting behind United Way's work, recently awarding a million dollar grant, a million bucks, given to the organization to support the effort to make this a hunger-free community. Together, all of us, everybody in this room and everybody we know, we can make this happen.